Lois Duncan. Lois is the author of a book called Who Killed My Daughter? And this is a mother's fight to bring her daughter's killer to justice. Her daughter, 18-year-old Caitlin, was brutally murdered in the summer of 1989 while driving home from the house of a friend. Two shots hit her in the head. Police called it a random drive-by shooting, but her mother's search for a killer led her to use psychics, uncover an insurance scam. This is my friend Barbara Pryor. Barbara is, uh, was from Wayland and uh, moved here, and after six weeks of living here, her daughter Sarah was abducted in 1985 in October, and uh, she still looks for Sarah. <coughs> Lois, your story is very complicated as you write it in Who Killed My Daughter. I'm sorry. I know. Can you tell us in a simple way, if possible, what happened in your mind and how the police handled this so that we can try to understand it? Kate, Kate was 18 years old and she was driving home from a girlfriend's house uh, about a quarter of 11 on a Sunday evening and she was chased down and her brains were blown out. Uh, the police immediately said it's a random shooting, a pretty girl in a red car, that's what happens, that kind of thing. Uh, we had uncovered information that led us very firmly to believe that Kate was executed. Kate's uh, Vietnamese boyfriend and the bunch he ran with in Albuquerque, New Mexico, up to 20 of them, he later admitted, uh, were involved in uh, interstate illegal activities involving the Vietnamese Mafia in Orange County, California. They would import the young Vietnamese men who would rent cars, insure them to the hilt, deliberately run into cars with, filled with Vietnamese gang members who were then taken to Vietnamese hospitals uh, and everything was covered by the insurance and the kids who drove the cars were paid and sent home. Kate was aware of it. She had met the Vietnamese paralegal who set it up. She had taken the check her boyfriend was paid with, run it through her bank account so she would have concrete evidence of this. It's signed by Bao Tran, the Vietnamese paralegal. We also discovered that as soon as Kate was pronounced dead, two phone calls were made from her apartment, which should have been unoccupied, to Bao Tran, the Vietnamese paralegal, who immediately had his phone numbers changed. Now, as you tell it, it sounds as though it's all very obvious. Kate? We firmly believe Kate was, she was breaking up with the boyfriend. She told us that night, if he calls trying to find me, don't tell him where I am. Do you believe Caitlin had it in her head that she would tell? Kate she would was going to be whistle? Nancy Drew. Kate was going to. Or Karen Silkwood. She was, she was going to blow this whole thing. She thought she could do anything, and she couldn't. Why did the police deny all of this, deny your theory? They say it's just impossible for it to be anything but a random shooting. Why? Are they afraid of the whole Vietnamese gang connection in some way? You tell me. I don't know. The best I can figure is maybe it was just too overwhelming and complicated for them to want to get into, and it's just easy to say random shooting. Uh, you had actually several witnesses came forward recently, uh, and, and when it came down to it, they backed away and recanted their stories. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the police and the witnesses because the police haven't spoken to us for two years. They are angry with you? Is that why they don't speak to you? They're angry because we brought up the whole Vietnamese thing and we're proving parts of it. And uh, that got in the way of their random shooting theory. And they're very angry. I'm sure they're very angry. I'm now going national with the story because I was told not to talk about it. And you're going national a big way. Good yes. Morning America, all the, all the television shows. It's and our last chance. Our last chance. You we are just, hoping someone will come forward. I feel someone will. We, Kate was just too important to die on a lie. You've buried your daughter, but you still don't have closure, do you? We don't have closure. And Barbara, you certainly don't have closure because you don't know where Sarah is. Well, every investigator who's worked on the case feels without question that she was kidnapped and murdered shortly after she was taken and her body disposed of so that we will never find it. Um, so that, uh, that, that piece is um, reality to me. But I think what we all share is that we would do anything, and I speak for all of you, um, that no parent or family or friends uh, have to go through what we've gone through, that uh, the justice system doesn't serve the victim and the victim's family. You've heard, you heard Mrs. Rossetti say that, that they had hoped 
that yeah. if Suzanne had to die, she would have died to save someone else, but it continues. I think we were all raised to believe in the system that if anything bad happened, we could turn to the system and they'd fix it. And that hasn't been the case for any of us. No, we're finding out that isn't true. I have talked about you so many times, Barbara, and what always comes back, as people say, is how in the world does she live with this day to day? How do you? Um, well, there's no book that's written that tells you how to do it. No. <laughs> um, I can't change anything that happened. Uh, uh, it's incredibly sad, and there's some days when uh, I'm not touched by it. There are days when I'm very, very fragile about it. Um, I guess it, it is so senseless and it's so abhorrent to me that someone as beautiful as our daughters were, that the people who were involved with their uh, destruction did not value or treasure the beauty that was that child with no respect for that child's right to live and the beauty and joy and what that has done to all of us who are now not part of their life. And um, I would do anything to have that person incarcerated so that they never walk the streets again because they're looking for a serial repeat offender, which is, I'm sure, the commonality here, who will do it again and again and again without respect for anything. Yeah, this is a, a residential area in Wayland. You've lived here six weeks. Sarah has a bowl of jello, says, I'll see you later, Dad. For the first time, I'm going to walk without my dog mm -hmm. because she was shy mm -hmm. and she was getting brave. And on a very busy street. Did which, they have to work very hard to get her into oh, that yeah, car? Oh, yeah. They figure about, about an hour. I played bridge last night with a friend of mine, and she said, now, how exactly would they get her into the car? And I, it just it startled me a little bit, and I said, well, one of the suspects uh, tried to get a 20-year-old six weeks after Sarah, and they, this is the one who's doing time in Texas for rape and murder, and uh, he had a knife at her throat and said, get in the car, so that would you, given that a knife is at your throat unseen by anyone, would you say, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, my mother told me not to get in cars with strangers. And it, it kind of uh, startled me that uh, people would think that she had a choice in the matter. Where do we all put our own rage on the fact that the system doesn't work? Barbara, as you talk to parents of murdered children, what, what do you say? Um, to be vocal, to be vocal. And I think that the, you either turn the rage inside and it eats you alive. I think writing the book is a wonderful way to um, have a vehicle to really uh, tell people when we have to keep talking and we have to yes. be as persistent because um, to be silent about it really helps the criminal. And this is so big. This is so big. Compulsively addicted people who don't care about themselves, let alone anyone else on this planet. Lois, you told me in the green room you never expected to be in the public eye. No. Uh, what I did, well, I'm a, a writer, yes. a professional writer anyway. So it's very natural for me to write Who Killed My Daughter. Uh, I wrote it in real time as things were unrolling. You kept a myself. journal. Yeah, I wanted to remember everything exactly because when you're in shock, you can misremember. I couldn't even remember the funeral service. So I kept absolute notes of everything. And then the time came to make them into a book. I thought if I could get the book out there with all the story and all the unanswered questions, maybe somebody would come out of the woodwork and would have a little piece of the puzzle to give us that would make the picture come together for us. We asked the Rosettis to tell us what Suzanne was like. What was Caitlin like? Kate was smart and pretty and funny and she wanted to be a doctor and at 18 she'd already gotten her own organ donor card and she thought she could handle anything. She was just on top of it and she wasn't really. She was 18 years old and she fell in love with the wrong guy. And Sarah, Barbara? Uh, my, the way I describe it is on a sunny, uh, snowy day, Sarah would be up at six years of age, seven years of age, eight years of age, and she'd be out doing runs on the hill, on the sled. And I used to, uh, mother, you're, you're wet, you're going to school wet, wait till three o'clock in the afternoon. You can wait till three o'clock. She'd say, Mom, what if the sun comes out and there's no snow? I got to do it now. And she lived her life that way, her short little life of nine years in utter joy, uh, completely loving life. And I guess that's the hardest part. She loved life so much. You said something years ago to me that rings in my ears this day. We are all Easter people. 
Alleluia is our song. Yeah. Meaning that we can rise out of this. Yeah. Well, your lives will never be the same. Yeah. Like will your Phoenix. life ever be the same? No. No. It no. Be the same. But you have uh, a big hole in your heart. Is that uh, what yeah, happens? That's right. Yeah. The big you boy. know, you go through the nightmares and everything, and this is really something. But my advice to anybody that is unfortunate enough to have the same thing happen as what happened to us is to be aggressive with the police. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's the now, big thing I'm you've got to do because that I found that when yeah. speaking to the police, they just accepted it just another complaint. They didn't seem to care. Be the squeaky, squeaky yeah. wheel, especially yeah. when it comes to your children. Yeah. And don't be